Hey, welcome guys. Welcome to our uh, coffee vlog number 19. Coffee vlog number 19. I figured uh, we should change the uh, the whole atmosphere and the whole background scenery. We should change it a little bit. So, um, let's talk about this. Uh, you know, when it comes to televisions, a lot of people ask me, did you always, like, have this urge to, like, have passion for television? Guys, I wouldn't say that I had passion for televisions or that I really, like, cared that much in the past. I mean, sure, I always wanted to enjoy uh, best possible picture quality, but this is something where the 4K resolution really kind of, that bug bit me. When the 4K came out in 2015, I really got bitten by that bug. And uh, I really got impressed. Actually, it wasn't, I'm sorry, it wasn't the 4K. It was a 1080p, I have to go back. This whole thing started with a full 1080p back in uh, 2007. I think it was 2007, they were selling a full HD televisions, 2007. And then in 2008, I finally got my full HD television. Okay. Uh, or was it... I think it was either 2008 or 2007 when I got my first full HD TV. Okay. Before then, I had something different. Okay. Uh, I had a plasma that was 720p. It wasn't full HD. So finally, on, with Samsung, uh, in 2008, I got myself a full HD TV uh, from Samsung. And uh, I played a bunch of games. I played uh, Arkham, Arkham Asylum, and that blew me away. Just looking at the Arkham Asylum and looking at the uh, widescreen uh, panel with full HD, even though I know that it was being upscaled to 1080p, but still, having that full HD panel, I was really impressed by that. I was impressed by what I was seeing. So I got bitten by that bug, that full HD bug, and started from there a little bit. And then in 2015, I got really uh, interested in high resolutions, and the 4K was one of them, you know. And uh, before I got bitten by the 4k bug I was also doing a bunch of different settings on uh, HD uh, it's just I didn't do YouTube back then you know I, I I wasn't doing what I'm doing now but back in the days I always had this urge to to try to get the best possible picture quality to get that fine tune uh, for the picture quality and even to this day I'm always fascinated whether I'm watching a nature content or the aquarium content that's behind me on the QLED and all that I'm always I'm always fascinated by how much can I push how much can I achieve with uh, picture settings you know and I'll use my eyes I've been using my eyes guys since 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 I first got my TV my first very first TV I've been using my eyes I've been calibrating by my eyes. Uh, pe people say, well, you shouldn't be doing it like that. That's why they have the uh, calibrating equipment. And look, I understand uh, their, uh, I totally un get and understand their argument. You know, their argument against not using the, uh, your eyes and using uh, calibrating equipment because your eyes cannot calibrate the way the computer can but there's some truth to that don't get me wrong there's some truth to that but the way I look at it is the computer has a certain coded standards it's programmed to adjust a certain level of brightness and certain level of contrast and certain level of color tone to its program standard and those program standards that they're implemented into 
calibrating software and, and calibrating equipment uh, doesn't mean necessarily they'll be able to match to what you were watching because the computer doesn't know, the equipment doesn't know what you're watching. My eyes know exactly what I'm watching here. I'm watching the nature, looks like some, some kind of a goat up a mountain, snowy mountain, and then behind me, this is the aquarium. So I know exactly what I'm seeing with my own two eyes, and I know exactly how much of the color I should put, how much of the contrast I should put in there. Especially if you have the knowledge, guys. If you have the knowledge, uh, one of the key things about me, and I don't mean to brag about this, but I have the knowledge about these TVs. I know how they're made, I know what they're capable of, and when you understand what these televisions are made of, whether it's the vertical alignment panel, twisted pneumatic panel, uh, quantum dots behind the LCD, and OLED, organic light emitting uh, diodes. Once you understand technology behind it, and once you understand what this panel can do, then you know what to avoid. You know exactly how to adjust the picture settings for that content. Now, I've taken a lot of backlash. Some people say, still, you, you know, you can't do that. Well, I can, and I have proven that. I have proven that I can do it. I've done it because I understand it. Yes, you have to have some knowledge. Knowledge is the key to a lot of different things. But at the same time, if you have the knowledge, then why do you need a computer to tell you what to do? Your eyes know exactly what's on the screen, and you know exactly what that television is capable of, and you know exactly how much you can push that panel. And if you have that knowledge, if you, if you understand that, if you know that, then you don't need necessarily a computer to tell you, you know, what to do. And that's the way I look at it. I look at it that way and I have been doing it ever since. And a lot of people who follow me, they use those settings and, and they like that. They like it. Uh, now, I do have different variations of settings because I do experiment, I do test, but it seems to work pretty pretty well. Uh, everyone told me, hey, I like those settings, they work pretty well for my TV. Uh, so, I always believed in using your own two eyes versus the calibrating equipment. And I know this is this video is going to rub some people the wrong way. I know some people are not going to like it, but I don't care. That's that's my stance. That's my opinion. That's how I feel. That's the whole point of this coffee vlog. Um, like I said earlier, I understand your argument. You know, you've been brought up into this whole calibrating equipment, calibrating software type of uh, culture. But even they know. Even they know that it's impossible to use their equipment to, to get every and each content looking its best because the computer doesn't know, uh, the, uh, the equipment doesn't know what you're watching, what's behind you, because they don't know. It's a computer. How is a computer supposed to know that there's two wolves behind me on a snowy uh, hill and that there's a, uh, right behind me that there is a uh, aquarium? How is it? No, they don't know. The only thing computer knows is what's programmed to do and what it's detecting. It's detecting a uh, certain luminous brightness light coming out of that panel and it's detecting a uh, color gamut that it's producing. But other than that, and it's, it's, it's measuring the contrast ratio. But other than that, it doesn't know a hell of a lot what's going on on the screen. Your two eyes know exactly what's going on on the screen. So your two eyes, you can tell, all right, maybe this is too much brightness here. Maybe we need to lower it down. Maybe there's too much sharpness here. It's too outlined with the sharpness. Maybe we need to move it down a little bit. I think my digital white levels here are too over bright. I can't even see the sky. I need to move it down a little bit. So your, your, your eyes can always detect better onto what you're watching than what you would normally do with your um, calibrating equipment. And let's remember, guys, calibrating equipment, it's super expensive. 
calibrating uh, equipment will cost you is equal to what my PC is, like uh, $2,000 or even more, depending on what other uh, software you want to get and what other equipment you want to get. It can cost you up to $5,000. And if you want to go all professional, it can go up to $10,000. Like it's really expensive. And the softwares are like $1,000, $800. Uh, why would you, I mean, the kind of money you're going to spend on calibrating equipment, you might as well buy two, three televisions, right? Or a PC. So, and then what are you going to accomplish? Nothing. The individuals who have those, uh, who have these equipments, to them, that's bread and butter. That's how they make their money. Uh, they're, they're doing it for their businesses so they can profit money off of it. Okay, that's why they have that equipment because that for them, it's a money maker. And that's what they're after. And I know you guys don't want to hear this, but I, I know I met the calibrators. I'm new. I've known a lot of calibrators. And uh, I'm not saying that they're all thinking the same thing, that they're all equally thinking the same. But a good number of them that I met, they're just after one thing. They're after getting as many clients as possible and making money. Basically, they're ripping you off. They're after ripping you off. They're going to sit at your house for about six hours calibrating something just for for one preset. They're going to spend three and a half to four hours just for one preset. And then that's going to cost you probably $600. If you want to go another preset, it's going to cost you another $600. And then if you want to calibrate other TVs in your room, it will cost you another six to seven to eight hundred dollars so the guy's gonna walk out of your house from the day with about eighteen hundred dollars in his in his pocket but just for one day that's easy money eighteen hundred dollars easy money in your pocket next day goes to another guy makes another uh couple of grand by the end of the week he makes about seven to eight thousand dollars a week so that's pretty good money eight thousand dollars a week uh you know and that's what it's about. That's really what it's about, guys. They're, they're, they're after the money. They're doing it for the money. I know this, and I know uh, some of you don't want to hear this, but that's what they're after. They're after the money, and I know this. Man, I'm an old geezer. I've been around. Uh, I met all kinds of people, man, all kinds of people, and I met these calibrators. I did. I, I don't talk to them anymore, and they don't talk to me because the way I feel. I strongly feel that it's a waste of time, it's a waste of money to use the calibration equipment. Uh, and I'm a living proof. What I, If you look at my videos and what I have achieved without the calibrating equipment, I'm a living proof of, with 4,000 plus videos. I'm a living proof they don't need that. And you know what? Any Hollywood studio out there who wants to fly me out to uh, Los Angeles, California, and wants me to calibrate their picture settings, I'll be more than happy. And they can put me next to somebody who is calibrating their monitor versus me who is not using any equipment with my own two eyes. And you'll see how quicker and faster I'm going to calibrate that TV and just how long it's going to take that guy with the equipment to get some kind of uh, half-assed picture settings. Uh, I'm welcome to it. If somebody wants to fly me out, if they want to fly me out to LA, I'll be more than happy to do this. I'll be more than happy to prove this, that I can do it with my own two eyes and I don't necessarily need the stupid equipment to tell me what content I'm watching. Because you know what? The stupid equipment cannot tell me what content I'm watching. Because it doesn't know what content I'm watching, what's behind me. Okay. So, yeah, I look. Uh, I'm not a fan of calibrators. I, I, I'm not a fan of, of using calibrating equipment. And how many, uh, how many videos do you see out there of people using calibrating equipment? Some people say because of me. Hey, I, I am, you know, I'm honored. You're truly, I'm honored that people have a woke up to the fact that, hey, maybe I shouldn't waste, up, waste my money. Maybe I should uh, think about this. Uh, maybe this is not something that's going to help me down the road. So, uh, look, you're welcome. If you're not using calibrating equipment, you're welcome. 
If you're not paying for somebody to calibrate your TV, you're welcome. I saved you a bunch of money. You're welcome. Okay? So, and honestly, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, I already spoke about this uh, on my previous videos, but I felt like I needed to touch a little bit on this a little bit furthermore and, and talk about this because, uh, guys, I'm all about enjoying the best possible picture quality. But you also have to have some knowledge. You got to understand, I always tell this to, to everyone, you have to understand what your panel is, what it's made of, and what your panel can do, okay? And you, you got to have your expectations set to a certain level that the television will allow you to have. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, first you need to understand what type of panel are you using and what type of technology it's behind that panel. Once you understand that, then you need to have the basic knowledge of why you don't need to overwrite your white digital levels, why you need to stay away from crushing your black digital levels, why you need to balance your black digital levels, your white digital levels, and your color. Okay, then you need to understand that as well. All right, because you have to avoid the oversaturation. You know, but I'm not saying that you don't. I'm not necessarily saying that you don't need to have any knowledge. You can't just go like a like a jackass, moving pictures around, settings around. You have to have knowledge. But once you gain the knowledge, once you understand how these televisions works, and once you understand how to keep the picture settings balanced and why they need to be balanced, then get, guess what? Then your eyes is the, then your eyes are the oyster, you know. Like the old saying, "The world is your oyster." Your eyes are your oyster, and uh, look, my video is a living proof. I have done countless videos with different picture settings, and they're all done by my two eyes. And uh, you guys can go check out that Lucy video that I did for that movie Lucy and just how beautiful that looks on the cast 8000 I still have that video it's out there I've done Sony X900E I've done excellent uh, picture settings for X900E for TCL for Vizio M55C2 uh, for the OLED for the QLED so uh, yeah go ahead and uh, I urge you to check it out guys I urge you to check it out now, if you see this light, this is basically the exposure on the lens. There's nothing I can do about that. It's just the way the Note 10 Plus camera works. It's not a DSLR. It's the uh, it's the camera of iPhone. It's the uh, Note 10 Plus camera. So the exposure is always going to go up and down, up and down. That's just the way the lens is created. Okay? So, well, anyway, that's all I have to say about that. Um, I didn't know what, what what else to talk about on this vlog. I figured I'd talk about calibrators versus my own two eyes and how I feel about that, you know. And a little bit of background story about my passion for TVs. Um, like I said, I, I'm always interested in, in, in something that looks better. I always want to make something look the best that it can be. And I always got fascinated by the picture quality of the movies. Always, I remember watching uh, Terminator and Rambo and all these other movies. I said, "Man, if we can make this picture quality look a little bit better." So I'm always dry, driven by trying to make something look as best as it can be. You know. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoy this vlog, uh, coffee vlog number uh, 19, and um, I'll see you guys uh, later. Take care.